Orchestra's live stream, where I ask the question, what does every singer need to know? And I'm very, very excited to welcome my good friend and colleague, Kaya Herstad Carney. I just clicked the go live button, so I'm just checking here, make sure everything is rolling. Yes, it is. So now I can, you can hear that. Turned yep. off the volume, feed is working. Wonderful. So I'm excited about today. Uh, I'd like to remind you right at the beginning here today, please like, follow, subscribe this channel and also give some love to Kaya and her channels. Kaya Music on Instagram, Kaya Music. Very easy to find. Now, let me tell you about Kaya. This is, I like to just introduce her from my side. I've been speaking and working with Kaya for, my goodness, pr almost two years, if two years, maybe right around two years now. And it's always been extremely enjoyable. Kaya is a seasoned performer, singer, songwriter, composer, has run festivals, an educator. Um, it's just very impressive. You know, she's very, very busy and been very successful in many things. And we are both also members of the Vocology and Practice Singing Teachers Organization, which for me is definitely one of the top organizations in the world. We share a common belief that we want to share, we want to share knowledge about singing with singers all around the world, across borders, across methodologies, right? So it's a great, great association with leading some of the top researchers, teachers, coaches, famous people, and unknown people that are equally as brilliant. And that's what we want to do is help bring this knowledge to, to the world. That's my mission with Singing Revealed. And that's why I'm a part of Vocology and Practice because that's also, we're lining up our missions are very, very similar. And Kaya is also currently the head of education for Vocology and Practice. That means that she organizes all the educational training, the events, the master classes, the seminars for all of these leading teachers. So she's great. And besides <laughs> all of these wonderful, amazing things that she can do, she's just, uh, just a lovely person. So I want you to get to know her a little bit. And thank you for tuning in. You just told me there's some gale force winds going on, some extreme weather where you're at <laughs> in the world. Where are you right now? So right now I'm in Liverpool, northwest of England, and I am a Scouseweigian, which is basically I'm a Norwegian who has uh, moved to Liverpool and they're called Scousers. So I'd like to introduce myself as a Scouseweigian. A Scouseweigian. Yeah. Can you say Liverpool for me one more time, please? Liverpool. There you go. <laughs> I love that. I remember the first time I, I met a colleague from Liverpool. You know, we'll say Liverpool, right, in America. And he's like, oh, how are you doing? I'm from Liverpool. And I was, I couldn't understand a word he said. I'm like, what? Liverpool. I'm like, <laughs> No. Anyway, but I loved it. I love this accent. Um, such a rich cultural background in Liverpool, isn't there? Yeah, it's definitely a music city. It's uh, got so much going on. A little bit less the last couple of years, but I think that's the <laughs> case for everywhere. Right, and people know, you know, Liverpool also is big football country. Yeah, um, what what you guys over there call soccer? Yes, soccer, <laughs> soccer. I I tend to call it football, just because yeah. I lived in Europe for so long, and it makes sense. Hit the ball with your foot. It's a football, <laughs> right? <laughs> it makes more sense than American football being called football. But let's not go there. I know, right? But you know, we do. You know, we do punt the ball and kick the ball, and um, but otherwise, kicking's illegal in American football. But we all, it all has the same oranges, oranges, all our origins. Also, Australian football. If you have you ever seen Australian football, it's crazy. It's probably one of the most entertaining sports I've seen. It's like a mixture of American football and rugby, which they'll probably hate me for saying that. But uh, Australian football is seriously entertaining. It's those guys are they are in shape, man. That's a fun game to watch. And uh, it's just one of my mentors. A uh, big, big famous tenor in, in, uh, from Australia. He basically introduced me to that. But anyway, this isn't a sports show. So <laughs> let's get down to the meat. Kaya, tell us some of the things you're doing at the moment as uh, an educator. Um, some of the people, the, the, the classes you're teaching. What, what are you, what's coming up for you? What's going on? 
Yes, so a lot of my, um, the last, well, really all of my career, uh, always in tandem with a professional practice, um, have been in academia and in uh, education. So my, I've just, I'm just in between my old role and my new roles at the moment. I'm, I'm, I've got two hats on, in addition to my vocology and practice and my performer hat. Uh, I'm still teaching at uh, Bordan Academy in Oslo. Um, where I was head of singing for the last couple of, of years. Um, and that's a musical theatre and commercial stagecraft uh, performance uh, and dance academy. So they kind of do a very vocational training. Uh, so I'd be running singing lessons, but also performance and optimal practice and doing like pop projects and various things. But I've recently taken on the... Um, the course leadership of an online bachelor degree for Water Bear. So I don't know if some of you might have seen on my name earlier because I realize I've logged on on my uh, work uh, account rather than on my own account earlier. So if you wonder what a Water Bear is, so it's it's a tardy grade and it's the most resilient um, organism there is. And that's basically the ethos behind this course. It's very much musicians learning through their own practice and um basically independent artists um so yeah it's so far it's exciting and a little bit weird to be online all the time and i've been on two time zones sometimes in classrooms um and then obviously the private practice it's the teaching a lot of teachers and pros and uh, semi-pros and aspiring pros this tends to be my 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 wheelhouse even though i love a a, a good community choir i love the the feel of putting a big group of non-singers together and make it sound great. Yeah. So that and writing with people. I love the artist development arm and the holistic singing approach. <laughs> oh, that's well, you're not very busy at all, are you? <laughs> that's <laughs> quite that's quite a lot of amazing things. And I really do respect you that you're able to get it all done at such a high quality level. You know, so congratulations on that. If people want to find out about you or follow you and give you some support, where where should we send them? So the Instagram, I guess, is there's a lot on there. Kaya Music, that's K-A-Y-A, music, like you, <laughs> like the English spelling of music. Um, and kayamusic.com is my website. I'm currently not doing loads of other... I mean, I'm on Facebook as well. Um, we have something coming up with uh, a colleague of mine, which I talked about last time I did the singing revealed, which is the singing theory. But as as you can hear, there's a, a little bit too much other things going on to drive that. But there's a book and resources uh, explaining the musicology and the vocology behind the singing instrument, and especially in regards to developing style and and improvisation. So you could follow Singing Revealed everywhere, but you won't find much on it yet. Yes, gotcha. So <laughs> yeah, keep just to keep yourselves updated. Um, Kaya has some great content and of course, um, book coming out she's working on. So best of luck with that. I understand, you know, having rolled out several course modules and, and big ones still coming out that it does take a lot of time and you just want to do it right. And then if you never release it, you're never going to get it perfect. So you just have to get it done where it's valuable, send it out and keep updating it. So like and follow Kaya Music on Instagram. And of course, like and follow Singing Revealed wherever you may be. Oh, sorry, Singing Theory. Did I say sing? Oh, oh no, you meant Singing Revealed as in, yeah. Sorry, I thought I'd said wrong about myself now. <laughs> I think you did. You just gave, you said Singing Revealed again, but Singing Theory is... And you have yeah. a channel, Singing <laughs> Theory, that you've started? Yeah, so we're on Instagram and TikTok and um, um, on Facebook as well. But as I said, it's very early days in. Yes. We want to have the content ready before we shout about it. Right, exactly. And I'm going to shout about it too and, and make sure you guys are listed on our recommended sites on, on Singing Revealed. All right, guys. Um, so I hope you're excited. I hope you realize getting a feeling for, you know, what Kaya has to say is valuable because she's been doing this for a lot of times and a lot of years, a lot of time, many years. <laughs> and also, you know, she's also a very respected colleague internationally in among singing teachers. And I'm happy and pleased to have her here today. So 
let's and I she we talked about what she was going to share with you today and it is great so I want to get right to it and pop the question Kaya what do you think every singer needs to know about singing so I'm going to present to you a magical triangle uh, which I talk to uh, my students about all the time of course it's not a magical triangle because there's a lot of work that goes into it and talking about it not being a sports show I probably will do some sports metaphor but I'll show you um, what I think is the most important components of singing. Can you see that fine? Yes, looks great. Thank you. Awesome. So basically I talk about the triangle and I sometimes use my fingers like that and go, so in this bottom left corner, you've got basically the knowledge, the, the, the head knowledge and the stylistic understanding of genres, the preparation of the song, knowing the lyrics, knowing the melody, knowing the, knowing the rhythm and the understanding of the music theory. So that is a lot of singers focus a lot of time on that and becomes very good at it. And some singers don't focus there at all. Um, and then in the next corner, you've got the things to do with singing technique and the body. So the biology, uh, the coordination, we we'll talk a little bit about what that means to me. Um, singing technique, the preparedness of the body, you can call it warming up or balancing your voice and, and the health that you have that day. And maybe also things to do with posture and position. Um, although I don't prescribe to a set posture because I mean my students might have to have their foot up here because they're doing a, a dance routine in the middle of singing or or they might be playing their instruments so but still slouching or, or um, ineffic inefficient posture will definitely have a, um, a an impact and then yeah, the final I, I one on that so cut yeah. it there and just say I, I I really understand what you're saying because you know, I've been on a stage performer for three decades and, and you don't get to always be in this perfect skeletal body alignment. You, you can't. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to act and move around on stage or get move on the set and things. But it is nice to, to understand this because I have uh, observed this. Many of the great colleagues I've worked with, um, we're always looking to at least you can come back to this home zone uh again and again during a performance and also there are just some there are some physical postures that do make singing more difficult for sure i had one funny one and i worked with a, a student where we, she was saying in in rent and she was singing um you know that you know the uh without you song and and we found this beautiful sound and it sounded great and then what she didn't say was she was supposed to be sitting on the floor injecting heroin during the scene. So like everything we had worked on in regards to getting the balance right between the airflow and the <laughs> was out the window. And as I mentioned earlier, also like not mentioning that you're actually doing massive dance moves, which will put everything in a different alignment. So if you are working with a singing teacher or if you're training yourself, make sure you say, what you're going to do and also what you're going to wear. I've had people come in, oh yeah, and, and I'm in a corset as if it's like a, a side thing. Of course, that might change the way you walk and breathe, which is a very important yeah. one. Exactly. I mean, just just to be clear for, for all the singers out there, I, uh, Kai and I are green. We're, we're the same opinion. It is there is an optimal body alignment posture It's very un important to understand and, and use. But if you if you are maintaining that as your goal for everything you sing, you actually become a little bit stiff over time. And reality is that we need to move. We should move while we're singing and keep things fluid. And there are lots of demands on modern performers. I was singing a high C in in a show in a back bend in a handstand. It's possible, you know, it doesn't mean that I want to sing the whole show like that, but for small, and you've seen pink, you know, coming down, artists coming down, you know, on cable. So in all kinds of strange positions, let's just say that it is possible, but they're not practicing their technique necessarily in, in those weird positions. They're practicing optimal body alignment, and then, then you are more capable to be able to to sing in various various positions and with all kinds of physical demands, you know, it does affect and impact. So 
just want to jump on that, that, that um, we both believe that posture is super important, but we shouldn't become too obsessed with having to be only in that position. Because if you get used to only being able to sing in one position, you're going to run into some serious challenges in, in the real life performance. Yeah, and movement is healing, as they say. But yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, and movement, I love movement so important in singing, learning to sing, you know, gestures and things really connect the mind and the voice and free us up. Um, I'm really excited about this triangle and I see, you know, at the very top of the triangle, you know, I'm really a passion, passionate about intention, acting, conviction, authenticity, communication. And I spend a lot of time developing a course for singers, you know, called, I call it emotional layering. So I'm really excited to hear you talk about this subject as well. Exactly. And I, I say, save the best for last in some ways, but like what I, I like to think that they're, they're all non-linear, right? If if any of these three uh, parts of the triangle falls out, the magic disappears. You might be able to get away with it if it is the style uh, doesn't, you know, perfect technique is not always what we're looking for. If we are looking for to, to like feel those hairs standing at the back of your neck. And sometimes, and when I say acting journey, the reason why I put that in in inverted commas, it might be your own song, you might, but it still has that journey. And for the uh, person listening for the very first time, that storytelling, that conviction, and the the kind of intention, as you say, the emotional layering. Um, and actually, I'll turn off the <laughs> the graphic for a, a second there. But one thing, one thing that is the correct emotional activity for the beginning of a song. And that's where I see the most of um, students who are on the kind of intermediate to advanced level where they don't quite get in. And even pros is, is where they've learned it and they're trying to show off their voice, but they've forgotten what the song is about. Yes. And they're not giving a dynamic. And like when we were having a conversation, I don't have the same facial expression throughout the entire thing just because I'm excited to be here, yeah. because eventually that is a little bit creepy. <laughs> Yes, yes, excellent, excellent, cool. So, so that's basically my, if I'm going to say one thing that I feel like all singers need to know, it is that they need to know three things, and the three things are three concepts. It's the concept of preparedness of the song and the musicianship, the concept of the preparedness of the, preparedness of the body and taking care of yourself and your voice and... Um, yeah, preparing that. And then the final one is being in the moment, knowing, so that's a prepared as well, knowing what it is that you want to say. But the more you've managed to automate, it is a bit of sports, automate the myelination of the technique so that when you do it, it just feels natural, then you can just commit to that performance. Yes, 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 yes. I, I talk a lot about automated action habitual action in all of my course modules you know but the big advantage of um, activating your emotional center and and going on this journey yourself is that you also activate your instinctual automated action you know the brain your brain knows already exactly how this works exactly how to make every sound you will ever want to make of course we need to train the coordination to get it working and there are a lot of um there are a lot of different methods to do that so let's let's hop around a little bit um i don't want to blow my <clears throat> horn too much you know i have that 14 techniques in this course dedicated to help you helping you and singers everywhere learn the skill of emotional layering, the skill of communication. And even apart from singing, from singing, I really find that communication is possibly the most important skill to learn in life. It's like most mm -hmm. problems originate from poor communication. And it's hard. It's hard. We all think differently, right? So how do we have these individual concepts, individual way of thinking, and then we think everybody else just naturally thinks like we do, but they don't. We all think differently. And applying this to singing, this is why it's so important for your own personal journey, because 
you will think about singing differently than anybody else. You will, you're the only one that can control your voice and the only one that can learn how to do that. If I jumped into your body right now, I would struggle because it's a new body, it's a new instrument. With all the knowledge I have, it would take me a while to be able to play it, right? It's not like yeah. the violin master that you just hand another violin and he makes it sound amazing. You know, it's, there are differences. So big part of this is really, I like to say, in order to improve your singing, you have to first change the way you think about singing. You have because singing is thought controlled. What you think comes out. You're just not aware that you're thinking this result. The way you think is producing your current result. If you want a better result, you've got to think differently. So yeah. let's talk about the um, this point of your triangle knowledge. Yeah, it can be confusing, right? There's so many resources out there, um, and we've got knowledge. Uh, what was the other one? Anatomy and physiology. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll share it again. Oh, change. Oh yeah, change. you can go ahead if you were if you wanted to continue in there. I wasn't sure but, if. Yeah, well, I think I think it's useful to go kind of back to that a little bit. I just need to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> it wanted to. Yeah, you got it all. It's just sharing a little bit more around it. Uh, there we go. So yeah, so the the left one is kind of the musicianship side of things. Okay. So that's that's like, but it's also and and a lot of people forget that you know feeling the rhythm is it swung is it straight is it is it six eight is it four four and that, that all this kind of stuff and it's not necessarily knowing your music theory knowing about the stylistic having heard other people knowing the. Uh, what is appropriate in this genre and that and there's knowledge in knowing even like what kind of vibrato what kind of onsets and all of the, those of you who saw the style menu that i think you know the difference of a and a straight on it's it's it it really sets the genre out mm. and if you the audience might not know, but if you're going, oh, RESPC, you know, they, <laughs> that might be full of knowledge, but what it isn't is correct for that particular yeah. piece of material, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, but I did want to say something with another thing with knowledge uh, and something that I've gotten so much more into, and I love that this rhymes. And you were talking about the whole thing coming, starting in the brain and the, from the intention and the, the motivator. Um, and then going to how we actually create any noise and any acoustic instrument, the violin as well. You know, we got a power source and for us that's the breath. And it's coming up and it's meeting the vibrating source, which on the guitar would be the string. On the piano it would also be the string vibrating. I know you know this, I'm telling the ones at home. <laughs> and yeah. then uh, you've got the, the, what's happened above there is, is the resonator and we have the uh, articulators and how we move how, how we use them and how we uh, how we kind of change things around inside of a vocal track it has just massive outputs which will affect both the technique and the style but so much of that will like so if something's coming out because of an emotional and this is why why we can't just stay in that upper part of the triangle because you might get overexcited and go and scream and then actually it's not a sound you want. So you can go back and go, hmm, why is that not a sound? Okay, it's be actually, mm, I'm getting constricted. Okay, so I need to go back in it down into the right hand corner and figure out what's going on there. Or I need to go back into the left and go, I'm not actually hitting that pitch right because I'm, I'm trying to reach up to it instead of uh, tackling in a different strategy and when we talk about knowledge I just love this image and I think I've put it in almost any presentation I've done but this is basically Picasso's selfies through time um, this is his self portrait from 15 years old 25 year old and 89 years old and he's learning the rules like a pro so he can break them like an artist and that for me is the kind of conclusion of why I like formulating so you know what is it that you're working right now yeah. is this a rehearsal where you are studying the song 
I'm figuring out exactly? Or is it a creativity where I won't think it with my left brain at all? I'll just... Or I'll just figure out the story. I love that. I love that. It's just... just when we're looking, when I'm working with singers and singers maybe tuning in or watching this live or later, you know, there are, we've got here the magic triangle, right? And, and every one of those points has so much depth. It can become intimidating for singers thinking, man, I'm never going to be able to do this or I'm never going to be able to, to learn all of these stuff. It's going to take so much time. I want to sing. I want to be on The Voice or I want to, I've got a performance coming up in six months. I want to improve my career. How, how do we approach that, that immediate need? How do we get the immediate needs satisfied and keep ourselves on track and reminding ourselves that this isn't a quick fix? You know, singing is something that can last like Picasso, an entire lifetime. So that depends what the goals, I guess, and the journey of the singer is. So like in student center teaching, as we kind of prescribe to, um, there is no one size fits all. And, and that's why it's really useful to work with a singing teacher. And the difference is, again, I'll do a sports analogy, going to an aerobics class or a you know kickboxing class versus having a personal trainer. You'll find out exactly what it is that you need to do. That doesn't mean that you don't have you can't do loads of things for yourself in between because you can record yourself, listen back. Um, I'm a massive fan of slowing things down. So if you're earlier on in your journey uh, and on YouTube, you can actually, you know, you can go and put the playback speed down to 75 or even 50 percent and pick that riff out or listen to what when does that vibrato come in oh i didn't rec i didn't recognize that when i was just listening but slower it comes halfway through that note it, there's a little um before that i never noticed because i was listening to it mm -hmm. fast you know so i do think that analysis but i don't want to sound like it needs to be boring like think of it more like de detective work so okay so do it completely artistically and with just the the inspiration and then go into your kind of hmm was that good enough am i at the level where i need to be for the goal that i have and if that goal is to kill it at a karaoke night that's a different training session oh i whistled a different training session than if you want to live fully of your own music um or if you want to be on, you know, on the West End or something like that, and right. recognizing where you are at compared to where you want to go becomes so important. And as an independent, that would be being both the critic and you know, so you are your own manager and you are your own artist developer and you might be your own vocal coach as well. Then that is harder, of course. But you can do it, but it's all about adjusting and recognizing and is it working? Are, is the, the ex are the exercises that you're doing in the routine you have working towards the goal that you're trying to achieve? Yes. Yeah, it's all, it's all very valuable information that you're sharing. You know, because I find that most singers, including myself and my personal journey, in the beginning you're sorting. You're sorting so much information, but you still have a very clear goal. I want to sing this song really well, or I want to get hired, or I just, I want to, I don't want to be embarrassed to sing in front of my friends. The goal can vary, right? But you still, in the beginning, it's just like, wow, well, how do I even know what's, what's right, what's wrong, which teachers are good, you know, and which aren't. And the truth is, it's difficult to know and you're gonna you're gonna you're not gonna get every decision right you know that's just real life um and i, th I find it very very effective and this is you know this is proven learning technique over the past few decades spent a lot of research dedicated to this it is very effective 
to not trying to not try and do too much or everything at the same time. Sounds so logical, right? Of course, somebody asked me that question. I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to try and do everything at the same time. But if you will compartmentalize this, singers, if you will say, for example, I want to work on my musicianship. Yeah, I'm going to work on, and there's all kinds of levels to that. Okay, we'll just pick one and give it a 15 minute a day focus for three weeks. The yeah. amount of progress you can make doing that just specifically for three weeks is unreal. And then you give yourself another 15 minutes over here to understand the voice and deepen your knowledge about the anatomy, physiology, the workings, where it is. Just dedicate 15 minutes a day, five days a week for three weeks. And then if you would do the same thing with your emotional layering and your communication, dedicating 15 minutes of your time a day, five days for three weeks. Now you're actually working on three things. And each of those categories is multi-layered, so we can't work on everything at the same time. But the great thing is if you, you are going to acquire those skills little on little, and they're just going to keep stacking up, and then you just start to accelerate. So this is really big. This is the way you create automated action and Completely. new habits, is that little amount of time dedicated consistently. The great thing that nobody really could convince me of early on in my career because they didn't really talk this way is you got to look, if you create, if you spend this time and you're creating a brand new habit every three weeks, that's not something that goes away. It sticks with you. It becomes part of you, part of your thought process, and you will be working on it in the background constantly, yeah. even after you leave it and go on to the next thing. So this focused, compartmentalization of these of this magic triangle that Kai is talking about can can really pay you big dividends over time. Um, just wanted to throw that out there because it gets overwhelming. You're like, ah, oh, I got to do this and musicality and ah, uh, and how it's worth checking out. It's like, sorry, I was saying that the, the whole idea, the way our bodies learn with new skills, especially to do with muscles, coordination, and all this kind of stuff, then five minutes a day is going to be more effective than one hour a week. Because we are, you, you know, think about something that you've learned recently, and whether that is like just how to do uh, so obviously we do more when we're little so i i just uh, i like to analyze my little nephew him learning new things of like when he worked out how oh we need to bend his legs to walk because trying to walk without bending his leg just made him fall and <laughs> we, we do this throughout life and it's completely natural but like for me um learning the guitar for instance when you start out you, you have to think about okay wait which, which where should the fingers go Oh, and I have to move that hand. And now that's automated. I just have to think, oh yeah, I'll do an A, I'll do an E, I'll do a D. And and the fingers will go automatically. But if I just practice once a week on that, that action going from I know it, so the conscious competence to the unconscious, this is part of my, my skill, I don't have to think about it. That is so much quicker with repetition often yes so like just building that tiny habits and there's a whole system there uh, Gemma does a great um Gemma Shugru does a great uh, breakdown on the tiny habits on her channel so I'll shout out but um there with that kind of idea of anchoring it to something that you already do so if you already do a bit of singing every day that always ends with five minutes of just working out on staying on time with the one in the beat, you know, whatever your weakness is. And be, right. being honest that it's okay to have weaknesses and still be good. Like good is the enemy of great. <laughs> yes, that's, I, I like that. You know, I grew up hearing, you know, the saying of you can make your weaknesses become strengths. And that yeah. seems so weird for me. I'm like, eh, well, I don't get it. You know, weaknesses become strengths. And I'd, I'd struggle with that thought for a long time because I said, well, I'm naturally good at this. Why shouldn't I spend more time doing that, getting better at that? 
And then it, it came to a point where I realized, you know, that it's very possible for weaknesses to become strengths. It's if you just give it a little bit of time and ultimately that's going to balance you out. You know, I, I also have a daughter, she is five and to watch, she is learning piano doing in a great program and learning music and all kinds of things, but she doesn't have the attention span you know, at her age to practice for a long period of time. So every time she practices, it's very short. You know, we're talking, like you said, three to five minutes on one thing. But to see how fast she progresses over time, because she is doing those short things five days a week, it's amazing how fast the progress is. And it, I don't believe it's just because, you know, child's brain, they can learn a lot of things quickly. It's really about those little steps those little tiny steps on a consistent basis. And with all of my clients, the ones that have made the most impressive progress are the ones that have done little steps, you know, regularly for a couple of years. It's the progress is mind blowing, but because you, you can't leap. I love to say that too. So you can't, you can't get to the top of your singing mountain with one jump. No, it's a ton of little steps. And so then people will get frustrated. So, and they'll be like, oh, it's going to take me forever. It's going to take me forever, right? But it's not, it's, it's really not, is it? Not at all. And, and like, it's that focus, it's knowing what you're, what you need to work on and having steps of where, what do you do? So like, for instance, okay, I can't hit that note because it goes all, or I, I can hit it, but it goes all airy. Then you have a very specific thing to work on. Then you have to work at, well, okay, why does it go airy? And and it could be because you have too much air or it could be not enough muscle or, you know, this kind of thing that is so much easier when you, um, I'm speaking very generalized, but is it because you 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 actually have loads of uh, timbre up in the, in the head voice or whatever you want to call that and loads in the bottom, but do you have anything to bridge those? Like, mm -hmm. is there an area there that you need to work with? And is it because you're trying to bring one voice up or the other voice down? And there's only one voice, right? But there's coordination between all these different things. Do you... So finding out what it is that you need to work on and a root of the next step that isn't that leap that you were talking about, but it's just that one little step, spending a week working on that, then you've moved forward. I can't remember this like a motivational quote that goes, don't be scared of the time it takes to achieve your dream because the time will pass anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And I think like when it comes to this, and I was so coward in my early kind of uni days, I really wanted to learn the drums and I wanted to get better at production, but I didn't want anybody to know that I wasn't good, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is just so unhelpful. <laughs> so like every time my drummer would like, go to the toilet or something i'd be on the drums if everybody else was gone and try stuff out but i didn't dare to help to ask for help so i never kind of improved because i didn't know what i was lacking yeah and so i got from that kind of i've got an interest in this and i know i was on that kind of unconscious um incompetence first and then i i realized that i wasn't very good eventually but i didn't know how to get to a competence level so just getting that little and that can be watching things like this and i mean we are very theoretical today but but it's about keeping that focus you cannot focus on that entire triangle in one session but you uh, sorry in one at one time but you could do it in one session if you organize your thoughts and and kind of go from the trying things out into was that good where do i need to improve what was missing okay, let's try it one more time then with a little bit more, you know, and you can work on the musicianship while you're working on the, on the technique, but recognizing which one is focused is going to help you get to the next step quicker. Yes. Let's talk, let's talk about that. If you don't mind for a second about how focusing on one thing at a time, or let's see, limiting your focus to, three things at a time um, or 
chopping those practice segments up into focusing on three individual things. Let's talk about how this, how doing that improves everything. Yeah. Um, well, it might be if it's filling out some gap in your foundation, going back to metaphors, I'm such a songwriter. Um, but like if, if what's missing is actually a couple of bricks in the foundation, then if you can fill those out, then that will have an impact on the stability of the whole house. So the same thing with technique. If you keep on avoiding, you know, yes, I can belt it, so I'll just keep on belting it. But I know I've heard other singers do a slightly lower volume in that. Uh, how can I? But you do, you're not ready to kind of tackle it then that's not going to be an improvement. But by tackling something, it would also help the way you storytell because you'd have dynamic control. Yes. It would help you in the coordination of getting the notes completely right and getting the stylistic of certain styles. But you know, if you need a hammer and that's what that genre needs, then keep on using the hammer. I'm, I'm going to run out of uh, tools for that metaphor very quickly, but <laughs> But the more tools yeah. you can have in your toolbox, the more options you have as an artist. It doesn't take away your favorite options. It doesn't take away the fact that you could just do what it is that you're doing now. But what else out there could improve your artistry? And if we can see it not like overwhelming, oh no, there's so much to learn, but instead going, oh, there's so much to learn. <laughs> yes, yes, that's exciting. And I, I look at it, you know, the, the human as human beings, the body is pretty amazing and the voice is pretty amazing. If something's not quite in balance, we find a workaround. And often the workarounds are much less efficient than working on just the most efficient way or the right way to do it. Right. So most of is some issues like you're talking about, you know, this bridging the gap between coordinations or your high and low, it's a, it's a coordination. So if we don't spend, if we don't know first getting educated and getting coached on how to, how to make that happen, you're going to find a workaround in your singing that may lead to different problems and usually does put limitations, roadblocks on there. So if you, if you do spend the time on, on this coordination, that's a little weak or a little missing then the body no, no longer needs to find a workaround. So everything gets immediately more efficient. And this is the way by doing, you know, concentrated segmented practice, you know, I like to say do it in three week, three week segments, focus for three weeks on, on one thing, two things, three things, but don't overload yourself and just be comforted to know that this focus is going to improve everything about what you're doing because your body will no longer be struggling. The coordination will be there. Now your body has energy and your mind has focus to put onto other things and then you move on to that. So it's like perpetual, perpetually accelerating progress. And that gets really fun because we don't want to be thinking, thinking about our singing technique, you know, when we're, when we're singing and having fun or performing in a, in a, at a performance, we really shouldn't be that. That's the time that I knock something off my, table with my big gesture but that's the time when we should just sing and communicate yeah, exactly. and and actually it's really there's two sides to that because one of them your limitations can definitely make you more innovative because you have to do the work around mm -hmm. and sometimes there are artists who do that and that is exactly what's their like magical little missing link is the fact that you know what i i have five notes i can sing on i'm going to create some really good you know music within those five notes and they have their focus in on other things, but then they have to focus maybe on lyrics, on production. And so it's not about, this is the, the magic things about becoming a better singer. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need all of them at all times to become a good creative artist. And of course, if you're going to be doing tribute shows and you're going to be doing, um, you know, cover artists have to basically work harder than the original because they don't have filler tracks. They just have to do the bangers all the time. <laughs> uh, musical theater performers have to do anything from like school of rock and bad out of the hell to, you know, really quite legit classical sounding. I'm being big as well. <laughs> but, uh,
and hopefully that's it's, it's our passion like coming out in, in, the, in the tip of yeah. our fingers but <laughs> but this kind of idea of it just all depends on where it is that you want to go and the focus can't be on everything at once because we don't have that attention span even though we're not five years old and we're not playing with everything we can't stay it's like having all the tabs open in your head and mm. trying to do all the work at the same time you, you're not actually closing the tabs and being finished with the work yeah. you, you're just doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that so that's why that kind of just five minutes there five minutes there then you put it together and evaluate, oh, okay, I need to go back there. But it, you're never going to lose that natural talent and the rawness. You can always go back to it, but you have other options as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's like something to think about. This is kind of a, a mindset day, I guess, for singers. You know, we've, we've introduced the magic triangle that is is very powerful and balancing those things and then we've you know find, found out that yes there's a lot of skills in every one of those points that we can develop but what inspires you today will be something you do at ease without even thinking about tomorrow at that point you will be inspired by other things and you'll be working on new things so that's your progression as a singer and that's very, very important to understand and ex accept. Don't expect yourself to be able to do everything all at once. You're inspired by this goal today. You need to be working that direction so you can achieve it in, on the path that is possible to achieve it. Then once you're there, it's just becoming a thing that you can do without thinking about. Now you're moving on to the next thing that expires, inspires you. <clears throat> so you mentioned the value of and I think this is important to to um, talk about because as a singer we need to increase our knowledge and educate ourselves change the way we think about it singing and we also need you know that personal guidance and mentorship I can go to the there are reasons why you know let's just throw the Hollywood example out there why a star or an actor that's hired for a role in a part can to get together with a personal trainer and put on completely change their physical appearance in six months why is that that's because they have the coach that has the knowledge they're dedicating the time to it and they're but those are the people those actors that achieve that they're very strict in that approach you know and they're not trying to jump from that day to the end day in one step they understand it's a method so we've got two factors we need to to satisfy but let's talking about the, let's talk about the value of of getting personalized feedback and mentorship hmm. well i still do it i had a lesson on monday um I mean, at the moment i'm i'm doing my vocal habilitation professional um qualification and that's gotten me really into finding more about the practical side of that because i've known a lot about the, like what happens when you get vocal issues and stuff like that but actually getting involved in that side and i felt you know i need to have a lesson with somebody who has been doing that so and that is i mean i've had lessons since i was 12 and that is 30 years ago now <laughs> so it's um it, you know it's it's something that that it doesn't go away that uh, if you keep on wanting to learn things to learn from people who you know, education isn't like some kind of magic thing, even though I've got my magic triangle. It's it's basically learning from other people's mistakes as well as yours, from other people's learning as well as yours. You can do it all by yourself, but you're unlikely to discover everything in your own, you know, in your own journey because you might end up down a, a lane that where you'd interpreted some information a little bit wrong, you know, and that side. Um, I'd like to have a little... Last year I did the acoustic pedagogy workshop and I got to have three singing lessons within a week. The next week, my voice was flying. I was, I just felt so good. And, and it gave me inspiration to then do some more technical training, which because I wasn't working towards any performances with lockdown and everything, it was exactly what I needed. So it can be 
sometimes because you have gaps in knowledge or skill, but it can also just be recognizing confirmation of knowledge and going, wow, this sounds really good. Oh, does it? Okay, well, I'll work more on that. And then you have the inspiration to, to kind of move on. And nobody has all the, you know, nobody knows everything. And I love, and I did also in my kind of earlier training, I love working with loads of different people and I don't have singing, I haven't had like, apart from like when I was at university, I haven't had like weekly sessions. It's been more, okay, I've gotten to a plateau now. I need a few sessions. And I think depending on where you're at, for some people that regularity is what's important because you might not know what to do in between. You don't quite know how to rehearse. You don't quite know how to warm up. You need a few tricks. And then you you do the, that lesson and record it and do it back with it. But for some, it's just like every time you get to a plateau or a challenge that you can't figure out yourself, just have a lesson with somebody who's an expert in that field and and they'll help you push, uh, help you up that next uh, step of the ladder. Yes, that's excellent. I think it's really important, you know, mindset. People talk about mindset a lot. There is a singing mindset, but it, singing is a skill. Singing is a coordination. You, everybody can get better at it and maintaining this growth mindset, this curiosity and accepting that you'll never be able to know it all and you don't need to know it all. You know, that's that's really important. But to progress from where you are now, you need to learn more and you need guidance. I won't do a professional uh, opera or a musical role without going out and getting some coaching because I want feedback. I need feedback that makes me aware of some things that I may have missed or helps me do things that I don't. I'm like, oh, how do I do this? And oh, oh, yeah, of course. Duh. With you know, more sometimes ease. Is sometimes they're just pointing out and reminding an advanced singer, oh, you're actually doing this, and they fix it immediately. But we're all at different stages of our journey, and we can all improve. I think that's really important to remember. Yeah. So, so if we let's just recap once more. I think the main the main takeaway um, of the conversation today is that we need to work in small steps. We have this beautiful magical triangle. I'll let you recap the triangle, Kaya. Yeah, so in I'll go big first and then go into the detail. So the big one is bottom left is knowing what it, uh, it is that you need to do. And, and, and the two bottom ones are equally important in my mind. They're just different focuses. So it is the, the knowing what the music is, the style that you're doing, um, knowing the lyrics, knowing the rhythm, knowing the music. Um, and basically understanding of music theory can be part of that as well, or production, if that's the way you write, for instance. And then the other side is things to got to do with the body skills, building muscle memory, building technique, your actual vocal health. Um, I've spoken to so many post COVID singers lately who just want to get back out there and working like from here again, but they're not ready to work from here. They, they have to, start a few steps back you wouldn't after having overstepped on your ankle you wouldn't start with a marathon you you start just making things move again so just remember to listen to your body and what that wants because you can't just take the other guitar if one of them isn't working and then finally what ties it together in regards to is knowing what it is that you want to say and how you're going to say it and a journey so it isn't just the same the same kind of expression throughout the same dynamic throughout unless that is exactly what you intended to do as an artist because you want to learn these rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist yes learn the rules like a pro so you can break them as an artist thank you thank you for that recap so we all need to be working in all three of those areas and our main message today is consider each one of these points of the triangle and pick one thing to work on at a time and give it a few weeks of concentrated short practice and then move on to the next one and it can be fun because in each one of those areas you're probably going to have something you hate and you know you suck at <laughs> and you're probably going to have something that you love that you like to spend time at 
So split it, you know, pick the one you need to work on that you don't like, that you're weak at, and give it 15 minutes a day, that's it, five days a week for three weeks. And then reward yourself with the one you love. Yeah. So you just work, have fun, work, have fun, be concentrated, and you're gonna you're gonna make incredible, incredible progress. So, and if you look at those three points on that triangle, Kaya's got a program coming up. We're going to talk about it when you guys are ready to launch that meets that category, bottom left, right? The music theory, integration, and musicality. You know, and the one to the, the, what the right and the left way are doing. Yes, yes. Whichever side that was on on my screen is on the left. But that's <laughs> going to be really great. I'm, I'm looking forward to promoting that course. And and the, the right side, understanding the voice, how it works, technique, anatomy, physiology. That's all about, you know, what the four activities of singing and sound design are. And then the top, communication and emotional connection and reaching your audience. So when somebody hears it, they naturally respond. That's that's the most powerful part of singing. The reason the rest of it exists, honestly, is for clear, powerful communication. So check out our, our resources online that are de designed to help you work on these different coordinations one at a time. You know, we've got these amazing online courses that can help you. And you, again, the whole theory in, behind my courses is exactly that. Little bit of concentrated time on each one of these things over a few weeks, three weeks, you're going to make incredible progress and, and then move on and enjoy, enjoy. I hope that singers, you've found this very beneficial today, this discussion. It's really about maintaining that growth mindset, not getting frustrated about the overwhelming amount of things you have to do because we all have overwhelming amounts of things to do. And I could get so much better and Kaya could get so much better. And we still have tons of things to learn. Nobody's going to know it all ever. So just take it on your journey, on your personal journey, one step at a time and find out where that leads you. It's going to be very exciting for you. Don't forget to subscribe and like and to the Singing Reveal YouTube channel and our other social media channels. We will keep you updated on all the great live streams coming up. We've got some amazing months coming up. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to Kaya Music on Instagram and Singing Theory, right? Yeah. Singing Theory, that's your tag. Give us some love and support. Kaya, thanks so much for being here today and for this, this lovely discussion. Thank you, always a pleasure. My pleasure. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next week on Singing Revealed YouTube channel with Voice Master.